and welcome. You're watching In Session with me, Ashki Rahmat. This week on In Session, we will be joined with a Malaysian-born mural artist who is well known around the world and has done murals for the rich and famous, including David Beckham and also Dato Jimmy Chu. Let's meet Annie Newman. Any new Malaysian-born UK-based mural artist to celebrities like the Beckhams and Dato Jimmy Chu started her hobby restoring and painting worn art furniture a gazillion years ago. Then one sunny spring day, she landed a job as personal assistant to an Arab princess that changed her life. She had a problem matching her blinds to her deco and wallpaper. Annie volunteered and dressed some magnolia blossoms onto the blinds and painted them with some fabric pens. Then other approached her with their deco problems, seeking advice on how to achieve special paint finishes on walls to match their curtains. After graduating from law college, she never opened another law book. Their hobby has now turned into a business and over the years, she was fortunate to be internationally recognized as an artist. List of celebrity clients grew and at the same time, she continued to make art affordable for many discerning art lovers. The concept of limited edition art was born of which she is most proud of. In her 20s, she lived aboard a traditional long barge with a thumping great Calvin JP2 engine. She was invited to the Deputy Prime Minister's retreat and she saw the preliminary sketch to the Magna Carta. At that moment, she had a profound moment. She realized we must never take freedom for granted, as so many have died in the quest for this. Meeting the great professor Stephen Hawking, she learned that you can be anything if you only believe in yourself, as proven by Stephen Hawking. Annie believes as an artist, you have to keep inventing yourself as she have to. Thank you, Annie, for joining us on In Session. Annie, can you share a bit more about how you got started in painting? I went to uh, the UK when I was 11, mm -hmm. and my, you know, my parents they, they were um, very Asian, and obviously, you know, being an artist is not something you know that prestigious mm -hmm. as a career. And I, I became, I studied law because, you know, that's the more in thing to do. <laughs> But I really love art because it gives me a lot of um, calmness, it makes me feel really happy working with colours and um, so after law school I decided to, <laughs> to buy a little boat mm -hmm. and I thought I could be a Monet. So uh -huh. I bought a little boat, put it in the middle of London, started to paint little paintings and that was my beginning. Uh -huh. yeah. But what got you started? I mean, as a real professional artist, what made the change from just an aspiring artist to someone who actually gets paid to do it? I was, I just fell into it. Mm -hmm. And I think in life, things do happen for a reason. And for me, I was, um, I was working um, as a PA to an Arab sheikh, mm -hmm. and his wife said to me, "Can you do something with this curtain?" So I started to paint the curtain and make it look a lot different uh, you know put some colors on it and that was the beginning mm -hmm. uh, in, in a more commercial way and then I went on to um, do houses okay. yeah and it's very trendy in the UK to have murals um, so the rich and famous they all love murals with their children mm -hmm. and then from the children I get to decorate the whole house mm -hmm. so it's a it's a really lovely way to merge art with your you know environment your living environment mm -hmm. yeah well you tell a lot of paintings around the world mural paintings around yeah. the world mm -hmm. can you share one that's been very memorable for you um 
Well, I had a, I had a, um, I did several months for uh, David and Victoria Beckham, mm -hmm. and that was really lovely. I mean, they were absolutely amazing, amazing people. Mm -hmm. And I was, um, I worked with Victoria's dad, and of course, I can't say too much. But um, they were fantastic clients, mm -hmm. and they gave me a fantastic reference. And then the next job I got was a really big one. It was in Mayfair, and I worked for. Um, <laughs> I worked for a guy who, sold, uh, who, who actually had a gold mine uh -huh. and he was from Kazakhstan uh -huh. and the house used to, uh, <laughs> it, it had an underground swimming pool and apparently, you know Iron Man? Have you heard of Iron yes, Man? Iron yes, Man. yes uh, I think it was uh, Robert Jr. Downey Jr. Downey Jr. That's right, yeah. yeah. He used to, you know, live there for a while and so I was thinking, because I'm a big fan of, you know, cartoons, um, superheroes. Yeah. So he, you know, I was thinking, whoa, he sat in that chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we did the whole house for them, and mm -hmm. that was a really good commission. Mm -hmm. So it just went on from there. And sometimes the commission is, uh, you know, quite for simple, simple women, you know, who just wanted, you know, to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to have some lovely art for their children, for themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Annie, I'd like to know more about some of the artworks and murals that you've done throughout the world. Yeah. But first, we're going to go for a quick commercial break, but do stay tuned to find out more about Annie Newman. Welcome back. You're watching In Session with me, Ashke Rahmat. This week, we are joined with Annie Newman. Annie, earlier on you mentioned a bit about you buying a small boat to live. Yes. Can you share a bit more about that experience? Yeah, so I was right in, uh, do you know where Notting Hill Gate is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I bought a boat and put it, uh, it's called Ladbroke Road, the place, so it's uh -huh. just a bit further down. Okay. And <laughs> I, I re yeah, I really wanted to be Monet, okay. you know, so I used to buy the hat <laughs> and, um, you know, and um, so I had a little boat. And um, yeah, we had two boats. So we had a bit of a hippie lifestyle, I suppose. We used to go to Camden Town. And my uncle, you know, my uncle's a dentist. He said, Annie, you have gone off your in cuckoo land, you know. So why didn't you study, why didn't you become a lawyer like what your mom, mother wanted you to be? But you know what, I went through a really, um, I suppose, tough, you know, it was tough in the uh, face of my life um, because, you know, I was under pressure. Um, I looked after my sister when I was younger until, you, until she came back, she went back to Australia. So I had, a, I had a few years of really tough responsibility and I wanted to have something less responsible. I wanted to be like, you know, to be myself, mm -hmm. you know, to express my feelings. I have done, I mean, I was a mother to my sister, mm -hmm. Lucy. And I thought, well, gosh, you know, I spent all those years being a mother at the age of 16, 17. So I had a... You know, I went through that stage. How was it to live on a boat and actually do something <laughs> that's very unconventional? Um, How difficult was it for you to <laughs> get out of your comfort zone? Um, well, I don't know. I mean, they said to me, you know, I have Malaysian friends, um, and they said to me, Annie, you're like a banana, you know? You're yellow on the outside and white on the inside. And I thought, oh gosh, you know, have I lost my culture? So being on a boat, in a way, you know, you didn't really have the identity. I lost my, you know, I, I wasn't like, I wasn't Malaysian, I wasn't Chinese, I wasn't, you know, English. And I had time to learn about myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did that experience actually develop you as an artist? No. I think it was good because I saw nature and I, I met a lot of people who, you know, they, they didn't conform to, to the standard um, to the standard art of living mm -hmm. or you know like they were yeah they were different mm -hmm. so I learned that well in life you know we're here we're here maybe for a reason and I don't know whether you believe in past life I, I believe I was a healer in past life so I learned about plants and I learned about nature which was great and that I think gave me the skills it developed my skills as a painter Mm -hmm. Would you say that living on the boat is one of the most influential things that ever happened to you or was it something else that made you become the artist that you are today? I think it taught me not to be materialistic. 
I think nowadays, you know, we are, we are so bogged down with uh, making a living, having that nice big car, this nice big house, mm -hmm. and not really, you know, finding out what we are inside. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm really talking uh, from my own personal view, not anyone else. So mm -hmm. I don't want to, you know, <laughs> I want to just stress that, you know, it's just me. So I learned that you can be happy, you know, if you have the basic minimum mm -hmm. and if it comes from inside. Mm -hmm. But then my, I think at different stages of my life, you know, I have different feelings. So it's different stages. Well, that's interesting that you see that yeah. it actually taught you to become a little bit more unmaterialistic. Mm -hmm. But you've worked with a lot of rich and famous people like Dick Dick, yeah. the Bathrooms, and also Dr. G too. Yes. Can you share a bit more about how do you actually draw your inspiration from murals that you came for that? Well, I mean, a lot of um, a lot of wealthy people, I mean, they, they love beautiful I think, it's, don't get me wrong, I think having money is fantastic because if you can use that money and you can use it for good, it's, it's magic, it's wonderful. And I find with their money, obviously they can afford, you know, to have someone like me go in and paint beautiful um, murals and maybe to paint finishes on their walls and it makes the environment more relaxing mm -hmm. and I think your home is your castle, it really is. So if you can go home, if you at peace with yourself and your children, you know, they grow up to be creative. That's really, really important uh, for, for some people. Obviously for some, you know, they don't really love art. So it's really individual. And um, talking about inspiration for my clients, I mean, they normally give me a brief and I go away, do a bit of research and then come back and I, I tend to find the fastest method of working, so I use a projector and sometimes if the job is really big, I have a team of people working mm -hmm. with me and um, so for a lot of house projects, home, um, home projects, we look at the, uh, the, you know, the decor, we look at the furnishings and we do tend to uh, you know, do a bit of matching as well. How popular is having murals in, in the UK or in the US? I mean, it's not something that we hear common in Indonesia. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, mirrors were really, really popular in Roman times. You know, Julius Caesar, you know, and, um, what's <laughs> the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo, they had fantastic murals you know, on the ceiling. So it's a very ancient form of art expressing um, religion, um, expressing maybe you know views um, you have Banksy you know Banksy the, yeah, the guy who sprays popular, yeah, yeah he sprays and his latest work is you know a barcode and the the French bombing mm -hmm. so it's a really it's a really good way of expressing a view it can be controversial or it can be beautiful mm -hmm. Well, you've not only done murals for home, you also work a lot with big corporations like IKEA. Yeah. Can you share a bit more about yeah, the sure. side? Yeah, sure. So, um, with IKEA, I'm, I do, you know, I do art with the children, which I love because I've <laughs> been doing it for a long time for them. And uh, for me, that's more relaxing. Because sometimes when you do murals, the projects tend to be really big. I mean, especially when I was doing uh, David Beckham's house, I don't really like heights, and it's um, one of the job. You know, it's really high up. So I had to learn how to conquer my fear, you know, of going up, you know, scaffolding. <laughs> and for that, of Michael Teo as well. Uh -huh. You know, it was like, hello, you know, really high up, you know, <laughs> on the rickety scaffolding. He's trying to get the Sistine Chapel. Yeah, I think he was. <laughs> the, po the poem was called "The Beacon of Hope." Okay. So we, we spent a lot of time. Um, we had a, I had fantastic uh, interns, um, mm -hmm. Hamazan. Uh, Noreen and um, Bika uh -huh. and they all did a fantastic job in helping me out in Malaysia uh -huh. so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah what kind of projects do you really like I mean are they the brand ones corporate ones or the ones where you do something for yeah. 
I think each project, you know, they have their, their inspiration. Mm -hmm. And the ones I love was the, from Cambridge University. And we did a, um, a, a, a mural of a DNA. And my client, he, he's very, very famous. And he's, you know, he was originally from India and uh, went to Cambridge University. And now he's one of the top scientists. He's discovered the uh, four-strand DNA. Yeah, so when we had the launch of the mural, we had a um, very, we had a Nobel Prize laureate, uh -huh. Sidney Brenner. We had the guy, we had the son of the um, uh, philan philanthropist, um, what's his name again? Sid, um, oh, trying to think of his name, Herschel Smith. Uh -huh. And he, descri uh, he discovered, ironically, the uh, cons contraceptive pill. Oh, really? Yes. And he, apparently he bought the biggest Kimberley diamonds in the world. Wow. So he's just donated 200 million to Cambridge University mm -hmm. for projects. So the project is actually, uh, they're trying to discover what caused cancer. So I was very lucky. I went, I went around the uh, lab to have a look at you know, all the different uh, experiments. Mm -hmm. So that was very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you are back in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. What's the whole purpose of this one's Actually, you know, it's Dr. Jimmy who encouraged me to come over here. He says, Annie, you must see the world, enjoy life. So I stay with you know, Dr. Jimmy when I'm here. And uh, Dr. Jimmy is uh, Jimmy Chu. Is I think he's a really he's really good for Malaysia, and obviously Malaysia is really good for him, to him. Um, he's such an inspiration. It's a really really great you know he 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 and his family, Datin, Rebecca. They're just such wonderful people, really humble. Mm -hmm. So from him, I learned how to be humble. Um, yeah, I learned how to be, you know, sort of human. Mm -hmm. You know, they're really, really kind. Well, there's something interesting that I know you did just a week before Chinese New Year. Right. I'd like to ask you a bit more about that. But first, we're going to go for a quick commercial break and see some of the murals Annie Newman has done. Welcome back, you're watching In Fashion. Annie, earlier on you talked about some of the work you did with Cambridge. Mm -hmm. And you also met Stephen Hawking. Can yes. you share a bit more about that experience? Yeah. Well, I've met him three times. Uh -huh. um, the first time, um, I was, um, <laughs> funny enough, I was, uh, <laughs> I was doing some face painting for his grandchildren. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I met the whole family. I met um, the wife, the ex-wife, who wrote the new film. Yeah. Have you seen the film? I did. It's amazing. Yeah, amazing. And uh, Jane, I think her name was. Yeah. And then the second time, I took, um, <laughs> you know, the the CEO of the Star newspaper. Yeah. Uh, that 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 Suri Wong Chun Wei. I took him to see to meet Stephen Hawking uh -huh. to interview him. Mm -hmm. And the third time, I took Lily Cole, the you know the um, the model for Body Shop. Uh huh. Well, you're back in Malaysia, and last week, just before Chinese Year, you yeah. did a painting on a baby bump. Can you share a bit more about this whole experience? Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Do you know what? It's it's really amazing because I can't have children myself. The ironic thing is, I work with children. And it was a really beautiful experience. I just, you know, I did it a few hours ago, and and um, I just think birth is such a miracle. Can you imagine the baby coming out, and the woman ha has to carry a baby for nine months? It's a real experience. And some some women really suffer from it. I mean, my grandmother had, I think, my grandmother had 18 children. Wow. I know, 18 children. Unfortunately, she died when she was 47. She had ovarian cancer. Um, you know, my granddad was a doctor, but you know, that's life. You know, it was really, really difficult for my mom. Who, she was very, she was very close to my grandma. And then I had, you know, sort of, um, I had um, cancer of the breast cancer, and then also, also ovarian cancer. And I do think that, you know, the reason why perhaps you get cancer is because of past issues, issues that you haven't um, 
reconcile, you haven't, you know, too much stress, too much running around. And I do encourage the younger, you know, generation, is if, especially the women, if you want children, um, do think about having the children a bit earlier and not leave it too late. In my case, it was, you know, perhaps a bit too late. And um, by that time, you know, about, um, I was in my 40s, so it was really difficult, yeah. Well, now you work with Life Ribbon and mm -hmm. you're back there doing mm -hmm. a mural on Asti Leong's baby bump. Can you yeah. share a bit more about how Life Ribbon actually helps women in terms of support? Mm -hmm. Well, Life Ribbon is all about empowering women to be a better self, be a better self, to look up their, their bodies, to look after their mind and um, uh, SD um, Muslim, you know, the product is very pure and I think Jeff, I think it's DF Pharmacy, they, they, um, they have a, a lot of uh, very good products for, you know, for keeping you healthy. So really at the end of the day, you have to watch really what you eat and uh, I, I know, you know, life is fast and maybe you, I don't know, I mean when I was here last time, I ate perhaps too much uh, Sorry about this. <laughs> Too much nasi lemak, which is the I don't know. problem with Malaysia. We have to. Eat <laughs> it is really fantastic yeah. food, but if you eat it every day, first of all, you're going to get constipation, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so, do watch. I mean, I'm just talking from my own point of view. Is to start from inside out, and when times are hard, you know, t try to be, try to meditate, mm -hmm. and try to be positive because that will get you through ultimately. Especially for women, you know, you're so busy, you're running around, you're running after the children, you're running after the husband, the family. So you, you should have time for yourself, to look after your, yourself. What's your advice for the working women who are busy chasing their careers and forgetting to take care of themselves? I, I can only talk about um, that from a personal experience. So my mother was a very successful pharmacist in Malaysia and she worked really, really hard. And she sent three of us to boarding school. She worked, I mean, obviously, you know, boarding school was very expensive. She spent most of her life just for us. And in the end, she died. I mean, she died. You know, my dad left her, unfortunately, for, you know, for uh, reasons. That's the way it is. And, and she was, you know, I don't think she was that happy towards the end of her life. So from my, my point of view is, in a way, I see what happened to her. And I just say to women, don't forget to enjoy the little things in life. You know, like, for heaven's sake, you know, look after your health, look after your face, your body, you know, and just take time out. Well, it's Chinese New Year. Yeah. What is your Chinese New Year tradition? Well, I mean, I've been in the UK for a long time, so I haven't actually, I don't really celebrate Chinese New Year in a big way, but this, this year is going to be different. I'm so excited. So I'm going to be spending it with Dr. Jimmy Chu and, and, you know, Rebecca, his wife. So I'm really excited. Yeah, I'm going to really enjoy the food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and obviously visiting friends and family. Mm -hmm. What do you foresee for yourself in the near future? I mean, in terms of your career as an artist, how do you see? I think it's very important to give back to society and um, they say you know if you become successful and you don't lift other people's people up then the people from the lower side will drag you down not so true and if you look at Bill Gates he's made all his billions and now he's giving back and I think he set such a good example for for so many of us and Dr. Michael Teo and he's giving back and Dr. Jimmy Chu so I would like to, you know, to give back if I can. So I like to visit Malaysia a lot more, and you know, write some books on uh, for children, on perhaps saving, on perhaps um, you know, some inspirational books. Well, Dr. Jimmy Chu was very popular in the UK, and he came back to Malaysia. That's right. Yes. Would we be hearing that from you anytime soon? I, <laughs> <laughs> I like to have a foot in, you know, both countries. To be quite honest with you. Um, I mean, UK has been fantastic for me. I've learned a lot and through ups and downs. I, I think I survived very well. <laughs> and I just hope that, you know, I just say to all the ladies out there, don't ever give up. You know, no matter what happens, don't give up. 
just look, you know, look like life ribbon. Look at, look up there, and you know, do take a little time to pray and to say thank you. Well, thank you very much, Annie, for coming in and sharing about your experience and also your background as an artist. My pleasure. Well, thank you. Today's interview with Annie Newman. Do watch this again next week. Same time, same place, here on Tapu. Goodbye.